I'm working on installing these three amplifiers and a digital signal processor. I have everything mounted, but now I need to wire everything up. Now, how can I make a perfectly shaped mounting board to hold all of the wiring distribution? How will I wire power to each of the three amplifiers and how will I get a signal from the digital signal processor to each of those amplifiers? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, where we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. I'm Mark and that is coming right up. Here I have my box of goodies, all the speaker wire, all the power wire, I've got my RCA wires, I've got all my different wire distribution pieces, fusing, and some other miscellaneous pieces. If you guys want to see a full overview of all this gear that I'm installing into this build, you can check out the link up in the corner of the screen. For now, I need to find a home for these two guys here, these two fuse blocks. They're going to sit in this location right here underneath the amplifiers and the DSP. The edge of this yellow tape is about how far I can come with my plastic piece that we're about to make here. I just put it in there so that I could help remind myself. We're going to get the fabrication process underway right away here. I'm going to make a piece of plastic. I need to cut it to this particular shape here. It's kind of a goofy shape. It's not just a rectangle or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a bunch of masking tape here on the ground to capture that shape. I made several strips of tape across here. If you're wondering why I added these vertical strips of tape, that's just to kind of hold everything together when I pull this out to capture that shape. You'll also notice that I made sure I captured this little threaded stud inside the perimeter. That allows me to drill a hole in my workpiece and that's what we'll actually mount this in with is by applying a nut on top of that. If you didn't have a threaded stud, you could use one of these guys here, a rivet nut. You drill a hole in the metal and then you use a special tool to actually rivet this into place and it has threads in there so that you could hold whatever you're installing into the vehicle. With the shape transferred from the tape to my three quarter inch thick PVC board, I'm now gonna rough cut out using the jigsaw. And as a quick side note, if you're wondering where I got this board, I'll put a related video talking all about this material up in the corner of the screen. You'll notice on the jigsaw that I did what's called rough cutting. I didn't actually cut up to the line. I saved a little bit of room. You could of course use a jigsaw to make your overall shape, but I wanna clean up these lines so that everything is nice and perfect. So I'm gonna be using templates on the router. If you're just getting started in the world of custom fabrication, I definitely recommend that you take a look at getting a router. You don't necessarily have to have the router lift. You can attach a router upside down in a table. I actually have a video about that as well, but just to get started definitely focus on getting a router and if you don't have the templates you can always start with just a straight piece of wood the templates are advantageous because we can get all sorts of different shapes but hey if we're making something simple like this and just getting started there's nothing wrong with just using a scrap piece of wood So I've got all the hard edges cleaned up and looking good. I've even added this nice arc curve here. And now what I wanna do, just to soften up these corners, just to make the piece look a little bit more finished, I'm also going to be flush trimming off this radius into each of these different corners. So all the big pointy corners are now rounded over and nice and softened, but the last thing I wanna do is this top corner completely around the outside. I wanna soften that up. To do this, I'm gonna be using this little 1 16th inch roundover bit. I like to do this because it gives the edge of the piece a much more finished look, and if we have any wiring that's potentially rubbing up against the edge of it, it's not going to damage that wiring as it vibrates over time. If we test fit our shape here, everything looks good. Now what we need to do is I need to determine the exact location of this stud. So I took a paint marker, I added a little drop on top there, I put this in the vehicle in, in the exact position, and then I just kind of pushed hard down and you can see now we have this nice mark right here that we know exactly where we need to make that hole. Oops. 
With the fuse block mounting board now mounted into the vehicle, I'm starting to plan out the location of my different distribution blocks from new concepts. I'm thinking this location here is going to work well because I'll have the main lead coming in from the battery in here, and then everything coming out of these can wrap around this way, come back up, and can go to each of the different amplifiers. I need to drill some mounting holes and get these mounted. I don't want any more plastic shavings in here if I can avoid it, so I'm just going to unbolt quickly, take this back out of the vehicle. Now with all the fuse blocks installed, we can now start doing our power wiring. Real quick, I wanna say a thank you to our show sponsor, newconcepts.com, as they have provided all of the power wiring I'm gonna be using for this, the New Concepts Colossus Flex Cable. The Colossus Cable is a high strand count, 99.99% pure detinned, oxygen-free copper cable with an ultra-flexible PVC jacket. This wire can easily be installed in any compact area within a vehicle. Available in eight 8 gauge, 4 gauge, 0 gauge, and even 4 aught gauge, this wire is a great solution for a variety of different installations. The wire is also available in multiple different colors. To learn more, check out the link down in the description to newconcepts.com. Along with using the power wire, I'm also going to be using these guys right here. These are wire ferrules, and I'm going to be using heat shrink and some other stuff as well. All the specialized tools that I use will be linked down in the video description. So let's talk about the wiring that I've done so far. This port here, I'm currently leaving open. That will run up to the main battery. That's gonna be my main power feed. That is then distributed from this distribution block to a smaller distribution block. That smaller distribution block provides power to this amplifier here along with the DSP. The bigger distribution block here is going to provide power to the six channel amplifier and to the eight channel subwoofer amplifier hid behind there. You can see its connections here. We've got something similar going on with the ground wire. The ground connects to a factory ground, comes to this distribution block. This is then distributed to a smaller distribution block, which again has the smaller amplifier and the DSP connected to it. And off of that main ground distribution block, we have the six channel amplifier and and the subwoofer amplifier connected behind there. Now I've ran everything in a way that I can start to kind of tuck these wires together and really clean everything up. But before I do that, I'm gonna start connecting my signal wires from the DSP to each of the different amplifiers. Now I have all the signal wires routed from the DSP to the various amplifiers. You can see that I used some different pieces of Velcro tape here in order to kind of secure my path and secure everything together in position. That way everything is routed nicely, looking clean. I also used the Velcro on some of the different power wires to secure them together. And I also used some of these plastic things along with zip ties in a few places just to secure the wiring 
to the amplifier rack and to the vehicle. Now there are a few other things that I still need to wire here. I need to wire each of the speaker wires to the various speakers within the vehicle. I also need to get a signal from the factory head unit into the DM810. I'll also be grabbing a turn on lead to tell the DM810 to turn on. And then from the DM810, we can go out and tell all the amplifiers to turn on as well. In the upcoming videos, I'm gonna have all of the wiring complete. It'll be time to start installing the speakers, sound treating the different locations within the vehicle and planning the subwoofer box build. To catch those videos and to see other videos in the future, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you to New Concepts along with Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping support the making of these videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.